Raise your glasses. Brown liquor estates. Might have to put one on the ground, man, for my homie. Yeah. James Greenleaf, man. Mm. Now we just playing nah, that freaking look at that coke soda, that man. That coke soda this time of night, y'all the lost y'all freaking <laughs> mind after we don't came from church too. Hi, right, welcome back. Random TV reviews, your girl Lynette, and it's your boy Stanley. Coming in with this week's Green Leaf. Um, what is it? Season three, episode seven. Yeah, the seventh day. It's a lot. I don't know how much more of this I could take. Yeah. But we all knew that this was coming. But let me go yes. ahead and do the YouTube thing. If you continue to watch us and you continue to come back, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That shows us how much you really rock with us. And exactly. And if you really, really rock with us and y'all like what we do, then show your support by thumbs up the video. And if you don't rock with us and y'all just come over here every week to thumbs us down, continue to do that because y'all know what to do. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> mm. That just means that you don't gave me a whole lot of <laughs> you gave me some minutes in the algorithm. You don't thumbs it down, which you know in YouTube's world that um controversy and thumbs down creates something in the algorithm. Just but to let y'all know, so when you thumbs stuff down, it, it it doesn't mean that it's hurting the channel. It just means that oh, what are they doing over there that we may can generate some ad revenue from? That's what it does. But any hoodle. But before we get into this episode, we can we gotta let them know that your boy is turning forty-one on Saturday, All man. All day, eight eight. Hey, Amen. And I'm blessed to be able to be here another goddamn year, man. To be a black man and here for forty-one years is a blessing. Cheers, man. Man, and look, salute. If the Lord lay on your heart that you want to sow a seed to your brother on his birthday. I'm going to drop the cash app information down in the description field. It's dollar sign, now prosperity. But in case yeah. you don't know, you don't show, nothing. I'm just playing. So, all right, we're going to go ahead and start this off. So, Darius, y'all thought he was dead. Y'all was huh. wishing death on that man last week. And look, how, look what God did. He went ahead and let our precious James be under the attack of the enemy. But we're going to get there. So... Mr. Darius was in jail all night. Yeah. So he wasn't dead. They they tried to pin some PCP, PCP mess on him. Really? PCP? So he gets out and we, I mean, a normal person would go home, get their skit together. But he was like, no, I still got some skit to do. I still yeah, I got to some, make some work to do. With that couple that had the whole mortgage thing with Eden, Val, and you know, what all that, all that crap. <laughs> so he said, but you know what? I got some things in the works. I can get CBS to get on the story, create a buzz, so that we can get some exposure to what Bob is doing right. But in the meantime, we can file an injunction because the only way that they were able to obtain that land was they had to be deceptive and not yeah. letting the family know that it was a product of H&H. &H. Yeah. So Fernando let Gigi know, well, your brother may not have known that the skit was that had H and H's stamp of approval on it, but uh, but his wife, she did that helped her know, and she had some things that she enjoyed too. I said, here we go. Uh -huh. Well, she ain't enjoying her um, mm, having hot tamales and playing laser tag all up and through <laughs> the brown liquor estate. She ain't appreciate that. Yeah. But so Jacob called Carissa because, of course, Gigi took that information back to Jacob. Jacob calls Carissa. And Carissa was sitting there acting like she didn't even know her husband's phone number. When he called, like, hello? You know who this is. Yeah. It's me! <laughs> <laughs> and he said, listen, I have a question and I need you to answer the question. Did you know that when we signed over this land that it was H&H &H that was behind all of this? And she had to answer the question honestly. And she said, yes, I did. So now Jacob knows that not only was she being deceptive just by wanting you to get rid of the land so she could get her way, she didn't even give a buck about your family, family. dog. Yep, the, exactly. the church, none of that. Yep. So now he The really, family that took them in and let you when they in. were struggling to you so you could make it, so you can go back out and live a better life. 
You bucked so, him. So Jacob is really done done. Now yeah. I ain't gonna say that Jacob ain't did his mess. But yeah. I am saying that we're biased in this because I just don't like Carissa. <laughs> I don't like her. But Jacob is he a buck boy too. Yeah. But I just don't like Carissa. And I say if you ever take her back, Jacob, I'm gonna fight you. On sight. But she played a worse the card than he did. Absolutely. Yeah, she played it. Not only did she cheat it, but she she freaking messed up the whole family. And that and name what you supposed to do, man. But real talk, like if we think about this and it wasn't Carissa, like just if you heard about somebody that has been cheated on repeatedly with people that are in pro close proximity to you and this was their way of getting a re getting revenge, we would kind of be like, God doing you did that. But since it's Carissa, we're not going to say that. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's an ooh. Oh, time to figure out where you were going with that. <laughs> so we have May and Tara. They're sitting at the table talking because she's still entertaining Tara. At this point, I wouldn't be entertaining her. She could not step foot on my property at all. I would have to let my pit bull loose on her or something. But Lady May, you know, she classed trying, trying to she's do, trying trying to do it, it the large way, trying man. Trying to do it the large way. And she's trying to, to find a middle ground that will please them and still allow them to stay in the house. So she came up with this plan that maybe we can split the land. Split the land, y'all can do whatever y'all want to do on y'all part, blah, 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 blah. Tara was, in some kind of ways, Tara was like, I don't have a problem with it, but this is not what we want. Because I know at the end of the day, that's not what Rochelle Crucia Cross is going to go for. Yeah, she, she, wants, she wants, wants victory. She wants a victory. And victory to her means that your husband is going to pay for what it was that he did to mm -hmm. my father. So, Lady May was like, listen, I have no intentions of leaving my house. I'm I'm, I'm not doing that. This is not what I'm going to do. Tara told her, listen, we may be at the table trying to negotiate, but don't ever think we are on the same team with this. Maybe you need to come up with a dollar amount or something. Yeah. But this right here ain't where it's at. I said, oh, <laughs> Lady May, I, 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 I would not entertain her at all. But we can't forget that when she was negotiating with Bishop about trying to sell it up with them, and Bishop was like, no, anything that we give them is going to signify that I did something wrong and I That's didn't true. do nothing. And I totally agree with I that. I agree with that. That's why I do not agree with Hush Money. Unless you're guilty. If you're guilty and you want to get off and you got the money to hush people up, do it. Well, if you didn't do it, stick your ground. But I know it's easier to say when you're, in yeah, the, when, you're say. when you're not in the circumstance. But if it all be possible, <laughs> <laughs> hold your ground. Hold your peace and let the law fight, fight your, your battle. battle. <laughs> well, that's what May and them been trying to do. I don't know. So we see AJ. AJ comes over to the house, right? And his little light has dimmed a little bit. Like... He wasn't as bright as he was on last week's episode. No. Nah. And I'm trying to figure out why. Yeah, what happened? And Bishop told him after he beat him up a whole lot of times, I said, stop yeah. hitting that boy in his chest like that. Man. So he told him. I say, got a couple of uncles that hit you like that too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and um, he told him, you know, go ahead and meet me out at the shed where the um, car is and I'll be out there in about 30 minutes. So we see AJ out there and AJ's just sitting around and he, you know how AJ is. Mm -hmm. He's kind of in that. Yeah. Uh, do, 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 and he well. said, I just can't. Like, he could not bring himself to starting the process of opening up this crate, getting the pieces to this car, starting to work on something. And I was like, does AJ have a fear of starting Failure. things Failure. and failing in the, the mm -hmm. in the middle and not being able to complete them? And if mm -hmm. that's the case, I totally get it. Yeah, I so do. So Bishop ended up having this conversation with him about salvation. And he was telling him, you know, pretty much, you know, God has a purpose for you. He has a purpose for your life and blah, 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 blah. And he was really laying it on thick. And he was doing everything that I did not want Bishop to do. Yeah. Because I do not like when I feel like someone is trying to force, force. Yeah. salvation on someone when the opportunity didn't uniquely, genuinely present itself. And yeah. in this case, it felt like it was forced. Like... I need even to though hurry Bishop, up. So even though Bishop was saying he wasn't trying to force him. Yeah. But it was forced. But it was almost like, I need to hurry up and get you saved. And I need to tick your name off the board and go on to the next person. Y'all know how it is. If you ever been in church, it, it is an invisible um, race. Yeah. 
to how many you it's can how many get souls saved. you can win. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Now. Yeah, and I wouldn't even lie to y'all about that. Yeah, because we don't have plenty of soul winning rallies. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh huh. Um, <laughs> I'm not doing it tonight. <laughs> and so by the time we get to the end of the episode, it all makes sense to me now. Yeah. But then I was like, Bishop, why are you, why are you doing it to AJ? But okay, get it. So we see Noah. Noah runs up, and he was like, listen. Found a caretaker. I said, why are you running, Noah? Stop running. <laughs> we got it. Found a caretaker. Ain't got much time, and, right? Because <laughs> the church is about to be, be, be demolished. So took him over to this guy's house named Otis. And Otis was like, yeah, the Negro used to come around here starting all kinds of mess. He used to fight with her all the time. And I tried to figure out why she kept taking it and why. And and then sometimes I would just act like I needed to come over for some business just to make sure that he wasn't hitting her. And they sitting there looking at him like, this doesn't make any sense. Like, And yeah. they thought exactly what I thought. And they said, well, do you think that they were sleeping together? Yeah, like they lovers? were together, a lovers? Oh, gosh, no. 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 That's what I was on. like. So you're trying to say... Uh, like with such disgust. It's disgust that the white lady is sleeping with... Yeah. I said, hold on. Hold on, Otis. Yeah. You pump your brakes. Because Darius was like, what do you mean by that? And that's what I want to know. What you mean by that? And he said, well, I hope not. Because let me go ahead and tell you what really was going down around here. Daryl James was her son. I said, oh, cock yeah. me, Kimmy Stone dead. Now, I didn't put that one together. Uh -uh. Yeah, I did not put... Yeah, I did not put that one together. I said, whoa. So that made sense why he was in the will. Absolutely. It make a whole lot of sense. Absolutely. I mean, who else would have been in the will? But I wonder if, how much was she hiding him? And was that his anger towards her every time that he came over? was like, he mama, was dark yeah, you got to stop hiding me, you know? It could have been. Yeah. So, of course, Gigi has to take that information back to the Brown Looker Estates. And she let them know, listen, went over there to the caretaker. Let me tell you what really was going down over here at this house. <laughs> the spirits that was rolling around in this house was that old Miss Davis was was um, busting it wide open for a black man. And we <laughs> said we James said, we, was a product of yes. that. We had the ding lane part right, but the wrong ding lane. Whew. Because we thought it was Daryl James. Yeah. Yeah. So Daryl James was the freaking son. So they was like, but she wasn't married. I was like, no, really? They was like, no, she wasn't married. But that that's her Daryl. son. Hmm. So Bishop is over there like, whoa, 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 whoa. He grabbing his Mid chest. chest and yeah. I said, mm, uh -huh. what's going on, Bishop? Fangle's just doing like this. I said, okay, what's going on? Well... But I think the unwinding of the truth was really weighing on him. Had to be. To, to it was weighing it, on me. Yeah, to do what he did. So, so yeah. He said, you know what? Mm -mm. Tell Tara and Rochelle Kucha Cross, come hither. Lady May said, oh, uh, uh, Kucha she Cross ain't stepping a foot through my door. He said, listen to what I say. Just do it. Trust me. Trust me. I said, okay. Okay. We got you. So next thing we know, they they in the house sitting down. So that was real um quick. Uh -huh. I said, why was there a mist in the house? Like this haze of heaviness in the house. I said, Coochie Cross don't came down and brought that dark spirit with her <laughs> up in that house. Well, went ahead and told him. Said, listen, <sighs> Mrs. Davis was your grandmother, and this is what we are fitting to do. If this is the house that is in your bloodline, and if we can prove it by blood. Then it is what it is at this point. Um, we pretty much I'm gonna be a noble man. I'm gonna be an honest man, and we just gonna let y'all do what y'all do. I said you better than me. But I'm I'm gonna take a step back and I'm gonna look at it from their point. I know, you know, we looking side eye at Tara and Rochelle at this moment. But you gotta realize they found out who their grandma was from the green leaves. Nobody told them that that was their grandma. Because the they were family secrets, yeah, man. the family secrets. I'm like, man, yeah. It, it, so they got to be hurting from that. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so it was a lot going on in that daggone house at that moment. So Jacob runs down the steps, and I'm like, Jacob, you ain't sense the atmosphere is a little tight right here. That whatever you got going on can wait a little bit. 
It really couldn't wait. No. Because Charity don't send out an email, an e blast <laughs> to the entire congregation saying that I'm about to expose everything that y'all need to know about Bob Whitmore. Meet me at the church. And I was like, do it and do it now. So Bishop said, uh uh, all of us, pack your skit. Titty, titty, titty. Yo, come on, let's go. And you wanna find out the truth? Follow me to the church. And I'm gonna tell all the truth. I said, "Are you bishop for real?" Like, I was like, "Y'all." I thought he was bluffing. I, I was did like, too. "He was bluffing. He just was going down to the church and like, he wasn't gonna do nothing." So we get down there to the church. Now Bob has already gotten wind that they know what he is about to do and what he was all about in the Edendale linen and all that stuff. So he's over there trying to do damage control, and they were eating it up until Charity started standing up and giving her spill about it. Gigi. <clears throat> Gigi, like, really? <laughs> like, no, no, no. So why is it that you use Miss Gladys, um, Demars, mm -hmm. as the person to go and make these black people do this, make them feel comfortable, and she was the signer along with these people? So why is it, if, if that wasn't what you were doing, predatory lending, exactly. why wouldn't anyone else be in the midst Exactly. Why is 100% black folk? Exactly. Black poor folk at that. So he's trying to spin that thing to make it sound like I was just trying yeah, to help I, these I didn't, people. I didn't know what was going on, yeah. Trying to help them stay in their house and get that beast from over their head. No, that's, well, that's what they say. Oh, he was that. acting like that she didn't know um, she was signing all the, all those black loans. What? Well, loans for black folk. Mm, like, whatever. come on now. So you can see Phil's wheels turning. Yeah. Now that all of the information is starting to come out. And Bob was like, one, y'all don't know me. Y'all don't know nothing about me. That's not what I would be doing, blah, blah, blah. So Phil stands up, and Phil was like, but I do know you. Yeah. And he was He's like, like thank you. Thank you for standing up for me, son. He said, oh, I'm uh, not, not your, your son. son. I said, ooh. Yeah, I, I said, it's about time you got balls and stood up to him, man. And he was like, you know what? On my mother's deathbed, she was struggling with herself, mm -hmm. and she kept saying that she hoped that God could forgive her for what she did. And he mm. said, I can't say this is what it is because she never said it. But I have an idea that this is what was plaguing her on her deathbed. And he looked at Judy and he said, give me back my mama's ring. And she said, this stupid ring. And, and threw, threw it on it. the ground. I said, I, I said, I just knew that, that I said, I hope either Gigi or Charity or Lady May just come out of nowhere and just slap the skit right out her. Because Phil couldn't do it because he was going nah. to jail like a mud butt. Oh. <laughs> Quickly. <laughs> so, at this moment, so everybody is like, okay, what the buck is going on? So, Bob is still, he's still trying to turn this train around because although that information had came out, some people in the congregation still was kind of like, oh, well, okay. my, well, maybe, yeah. All right. So, then he goes on his spill about him saving this church from its past leader that ran it in the ground and did all of this. So Bishop comes in. And, and said, like, you're right. You're right. You're right. So Bishop took the pulpit, literally, took the, play, um, the, the platform, and he was like, listen, I'm about to tell some truth right here. What happened was, hmm. back in the day, there was a lady, Miss Davis, and Miss Davis didn't have any children left. My lawyer told me, say, hey, Miss Davis has this house, this state, and she pretty much needed somebody that sh that could make her feel good, yeah. feel loved, feel attached to, mm -hmm. and possibly you can grease Leave her up so that, that she'll, house. she'll leave her skit to you. Exactly. And Bishop said, that's what I did. That's what I did. I met with her, and she left me this house. At the time, I did not put two and two together. He said, I did. But I did. But, but, it, but was it was like a, a miss. miss. I, I get what I got what he was saying. And he said, I, I did get what he was saying. Pretty much, Bishop said, what I, what I saw, I already had the promise in my hand. And so I, I, choo I chose yeah. not to see yeah. what I saw because yeah. I saw my promise and my future attached to a really bad situation yeah. if I decided that I didn't want it. But he didn't know how far that rabbit hole went. So he said, with that house, I was able to take out a loan, mm -hmm. leave, lose, um, use the house as collateral, collateral to build this church. church. He said, within this, yes, I started to get greedy. 
Mm-hmm. I started to get puffed up. Mm-hmm. I started to seek power and all of that. And he said, and for that, I have failed my congregation because I wanted my congregation to see what the Lord has done. But really, it was about my ego mm-hmm. getting things. Greed. And greed setting in. Yeah. So then Corinne Stom stands up and she was like, that's not all, all you taught did. us. Yeah. So I was so glad that even in a bad situation where he really did do those things, they were able to still see past all of that and get the real message from Bishop. Yeah. And they was like, no, no, no. So they still had Bishop's back. And all of a sudden, you know, you see Charity start singing her songs and all of that. And the whole atmosphere of the congregation just switched. And so the anointing showed up. And the devil had to flee. Had to flee. So Bob, Fernando, and Judy bounced up up out of there. Yep. I said, mm. Take Connie with you, with her only, if only you knew we. <laughs> but Connie stayed there. And they all kind of just embraced, and you know, the family was kind of just embracing each other, and the congregation seemed like a big, one big happy family once again. We see Charity. Charity is walking down the hallway, and Phil runs out behind her. Mm-hmm. Which and I, I said, knew it, which I knew it. I said, don't you fall for it. I said, I, and I was like, bro, I was like, I was like, bro, Phil, you too late, bro. Nah, it's it's easy for you to say that you want her now, because you ain't you can see the you truth. You have nothing. Yeah, you got nothing. So now you like her fallback plan. And he so. was like, "I love you, Charity." And she told him, she said, "Nobody hurt me the way that you did." Not, not even, even my ex husband. I was like, "Not even Kev." I said, "Wait a minute, Charity." That's like, not fair. wow, you put yeah. I said, you've been with Kevin all them years. I don't I don't know how long it was, but long enough for y'all to be married and have a whole baby. And Phil, in and, a matter of what? And he what? left you for a man. And you mean to tell me that Phil that you know for a good six months hurt broke your you heart? Worse? Worse than Kevin did? Wow. I would be offended if I was Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what Kevin at anyway? Oh, Kevin may come back. Yeah. Kevin at this and Aaron point, over there living their best life. At this point, yeah. he ain't come, You know, they probably try to bring him back in the spinoff. Huh. They so, going to spin him right on back in. I was so proud of Charity. She was like, you know yeah. what? Mm-mm. Nope, I will never. And she walked away from him like like a boss. I said, go ahead, Charity. So then we saw that within Bishop's speech, Rochelle Cross got the peace that she, that she was needing to move on. And it came to find out, she was like, I never wanted that house. Mm-hmm. For what? She said, I this wanted the, the truth. truth. And I got that. So and I, I was like, ahead. I was like, we... Yeah. Yeah, I was like, I totally judged you, Mike. I, I thought I you want have. I thought she wanted the money, the house, the cars, but the bling. She, she wanted to know what happened to her father. But then again, it is so sad that they had to find that out through the green leaves and not through their own family. But it's still some stuff not adding up. Yeah, to still me. some stuff, yeah, still some stuff, yeah. Because Bishop and Mac called for Daryl James. To be in that building when they burnt it down. Now, did Mac deceive Bishop into making that call? Yeah. Because he was putting the plan in motion to have his man burnt up so that you could slide in to as get the, the honorary sign. Yeah. And then get the house and boom, live happily ever after. Yeah. So that's what I was seeing the miss is that at the time, like you said, the time that. Daryl James was got burnt up in the church was around the same time that how the house part and he knew about all that and he was like he thought it was a connection but he knew it was a connection. Yeah, but I, I didn't even want to see it because it was gonna buck up what I what had I, yeah. going on over here. Exactly. So Gigi runs after Rochelle because Rochelle, I mean she she can go now. And Coochie Cross, um Ro, I mean um Gigi said <laughs> Hey, you good now? You got what you needed? <laughs> and they ended up selling him the score. Yeah. And Gigi said, well, I want to thank you for what you did with Noah and AJ. I know that that was you behind all of that. Coochie Cross was like, oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Because I didn't want you to think that you were the only boss around here. I got scared. But she was pretty much telling her what you thought you were doing for evil. It actually worked out. Exactly. For my good. And vice versa. And vice like, versa, everything yeah. that we thought was evil, it kind of just worked out in its own time. So, let's talk about Sophia and Zora real quick. Zora, (laughs) 
you you know last week Jacob told her to cancel that flight, right? She didn't cancel that flight. But now she's trying to <laughs> convince Sophia to go to New York with her because she needs somebody to pay half uh -huh. on her rent. Yep. I said, oh, yeah, New York is expensive. Do you so? And you going up there without no job. But she told Jacob that I'm getting a room that's so small that I can't even get a boy in there. But you trying to get Sophia in there. Because she lying. Yeah. <laughs> so Sophia was like, uh, I don't know about that. But then within that, we see Sophia have a conversation with Gigi. And I guess she felt like it was time to address the elephant in the room. And she was like, Mom, I know. I was, <laughs> I, was, I was real bad for sending those pictures over to him. And da da she, she said, What pictures? Oh, what pictures you talking about? I said, oh, Zordo, got you. Got you. <laughs> so we thought that the snitch had snitched on the snitch. And she made but the snitch. But she should have already known because Gigi would have came running as soon as she said something. I don't know. Gigi got a lot going on. Yeah, maybe she, she did. Just maybe she was trying to get herself and get around to it to see it maybe. Yeah, I don't know. <sighs> Sophia just told on herself. Sophia told all the way on herself. So then we get over there to the house, right? I'm looking at my notes. I want to make sure I ain't forget <laughs> Nathan that happened. So over there at the house, because y'all know this entire time, um, Lady May has been kind of on this, I want to get married on flag day. And every time he brings up something, it kind of just, it just don't go right. Yeah. They don't see eye to eye. Yeah. But they just read about something. But after he don't cleanse his spirit and all of that, uh -huh. she's like, oh, I'm about to give him some tonight. Uh -huh. She had her good... Bra on with the titties heist up. Yeah, for her perfume her, on. The good kind. The good kind. Good lotion. The kind on. with the extension spray. I said. <laughs> I said, oh, okay, it's about to go down. Yep. Over there at the green at the Brown Looker Estates, right? But before we get there, Bob resigned from H and H. Yes. Because yes, CBS don't picked up the story. So now all your skit is on Front Street. So if he resigned from H&H, &H, more than likely but that's going to translate my, down but, to the Senate. But my question is, is he going to jail? No, probably not. They don't yeah. No, yeah. not going to say it. Yeah. But <laughs> so Lady May gets over there and she puts her arm on Bishop. And I said, hold on. Something ain't right. I said, is he asleep sitting up? Yeah. And he over there. I was like, just, he better not be dead. He better not be dead. He over there. And then I saw his eye move. And I said, well, no. I said, Lord Bishop over there stroking out. Yeah. Lord, he over here stroking out, y'all. And then at one point, it looked like, I was like, is he is he playing with her? Because he said, get something for me to write for the write. Now, he didn't say that, but she was like, you want something to write? And, and he, he was like, like pen. And I was like, is he, like you said, is he messing with her because she was stringing him along about yeah. his marriage? And then got the paper, and he was he put on that, I do. And I said, oh, Bishop about to straighten that face Yeah, he up. about to straighten up. Yeah, he be all good. And he killed back. I was like, no, bring she him back. Call come, 9 -1 -1. come on back, Bishop. Because yeah, I was like, he really going to let her call 911, but I said, maybe he going to carry the joke just a little bit too far to get her back. And maybe he gave him a heads up, but, dog. Oh. He done they, went back, and he, we can just imagine that, Bishop is gone. Yeah. And like I said on the on the live we just did, who gonna bring the potato? Who gonna make the potato salad? I have who bring the soda. I, I have one. I, I know we got one more episode got to go. But what is the most powerful message from this whole green leaf experience? That you gotta stand in your own truth, man. Yes. And be honest about it from the jump. Because if it don't, it's going to create havoc. Uh, havoc, yes. Havoc. And the crazy thing about it, look at them in that big house, that yeah. estate. And they're living there with a level of peace, but not total peace. Yes. Then it's always something going on. Mm -hmm. And it's because it was ill-gotten. Yeah. And that's what Bishop was like. Every time something happened, everything would go wrong. Everything go So that, I, I, they make us examine our life to go back. Is there something that you're living right now that's not the truth? Yeah. And maybe it's a lie that you need to get straight that you might have to confront. It could be with yourself or another person. And then but, it makes you think about, like, people that create false blessings. Like, yeah, they create things that other people will be in awe about. Like, oh, the Mercedes, or you got a nice Benz or something like that. But you in debt. 
or yeah. you had to do something shady to get there, mm-hmm. or you had to twist somebody's arm to yeah. talk to somebody that or shook defraud, hands with somebody, defraud the system, or something like that. Because you don't got puffed up in that thing. Yeah. Wow. And you got to maintain. It. I mean, look at skanks. Skanks was gambling. I, I, you know, gambling to try to keep get money to keep the church going mm-hmm. and to keep his image. Yeah. That that yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. This episode was heavy for me, and yeah. and, and I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. It was yeah. nowhere else to go from here. Yep. Once he cleans his spirit, and then, like I said, now I understand why he was trying to get his grandson uh, saved because he mm-hmm. told him, "Say, so you gonna be on this whole thing like your like your sister, like y'all just ain't really into the God thing." So mm-hmm. he was trying his hardest to get AJ saved because Bishop knew he was getting ready to go. He knew that his time was. But I wish up. they let him preach at least. One more time. Man. On a Sunday morning. And like I said in the live, you could at least let Lady May get some one last time. <laughs> let her ride that thing on the glory <laughs> straight from the VA. The dirty, dirty south. Two up, two down. Holla! Holla.